it happened. Our first major water leak in the underbelly. We showed up to our wonderful huddle, we're getting ready, and I heard a bunch of water draining out from underneath. So I jumped in to find a problem as I was hooking up everything. What we have is a, is a huge bubble. I don't even know if that's gonna pick it up. Can you see how it's all sagged down? I ended up poking a bunch of holes in it. It's in between that, that basically that third act in the center axle going all the way across. And so I'm getting ready to try to drop the underbelly as much as I can by taking out all of the stuff along the side so I can see how bad it is. I think in RV life, this is one of the things that we all dread the most. I mean, besides the slide breaking and not working for like five months, this is like the next thing. This is like, if you want to check them off in order, this is probably my check off. I figured I'd bring you along for the journey. Not quite sure how this video will turn out, but if one of you might be struggling in the same area down the road, we're going to find out what it is. This is a Grand Design Momentum 395 MS. And I have a feeling it's going to have to do something with our auxiliary tank, freshwater tank, or our regular freshwater tank because the water was completely clear. And we were running about, hmm, I'd say, quarter full. All right, let's jump into it. Roll the intro. A man and a woman left their home to switch things up and go on the road. And they didn't know where they would go, but it's gotta be better than staying home. They switched it up. They switched it up. Welcome back. So I poked holes in the main area to drain water and then I made sure all the tanks were drained out. The bad part is to pull this, I have to pull from here, the back part to the first axle to see where everything is the problem. So I'll start by pulling all of the screws and then I'll make adjustments accordingly around like the the axles and the springs and oh gosh that thing so yeah I really don't know what to expect it's just little things right safety first ah oh, it's wet all the way back here What I've learned is you make sure all these are in the same exact place and order. Ah, this is gonna suck. Let's see what I'm seeing. This is all wet all the way to the back. This is our lights for the underbelly. So you can see where I poked the holes as so I worked my way down. It's in between those axles. That's leaking pretty good. All right, I have to go back and pull those other ones. In my ears. All the dirt that comes off, this is why you wear safety stuff. I don't know how this all works. <laughs> oh, real dirt never hurt anyone, I guess. I'm sure all of you RV people are going to tell me how to get around this thing, but I quite honestly have no idea. I think I'm just gonna have to cut it. Oh no, oh no. Oh no, 
I'm getting ready to be smushed. Oh, come on, tear. Oh, I'm being smashed alive. I need a knife. Sheila, I need a knife. Well, you can see all the water is drained right there. It's made a leak down this direction. It's leaking out. I don't know how to treat this, so I'm getting drenched. So I'm just gonna cut around this pipe. Somebody's gonna tell me I'm doing it wrong in the comments, but that's okay. I don't have any other choices. Oh, crap, huh? What a mess. Now, I've kind of cut myself off. I guess I'll have to go around and climb through the axles to get to the other part. Well, there's the heating pad. This happens to be your black two tank in the back of the 395MS, and it's actually where all the water drains when you're washing your clothes from the dish or from the washing machine. And so your black and your gray water tend to go together. And you can see how it kind of slopes down. I imagine this bowing is because that's how it drains out the tank. So, okay, well, this isn't black water, it's all clean, fresh water. So I am assuming it's gonna be in the tank in the front. So let's climb around uh, this lovely thing that I've just created and see what we can find on the other side. I saved my, my teddy bear thing so I could use it to work underneath the rig. So this has become like my, whenever there's a, a major catastrophe, I use it to lay on. Cause you know what? I ain't getting no younger. I gotta crawl all the way back under there though. I'm hoping I can pull from the front axle and I don't have to keep coming back and remove the spare. Gosh, I'm hoping. If you watched any of our other stuff, ooh, that's wet. I always compare this to Bruce Willis. And that movie where he's under a terrorist. The one that people ever say it's not a it's 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 not a um, Christmas movie, but it is a Christmas movie. I don't remember. My mind's shot right at the moment because the water keeps coming. Quite honestly, I'm hoping that's not from our current fresh water because I have the fresh water on, and I'm hoping that's just a lot of water, a lot of water from like our tanks. But the tanks are completely empty, so maybe it's just water from. I honestly don't know what it's from. It's the weirdest thing ever. I don't know how I'm going to get around. I'm not going to get around that, am I? It's coming out more. Um, I'm going to cut in between my overflow valve and my dump valve for the fresh water. So I don't know how I'm going to get around it otherwise. It's a lot of silicone. A lot of silicone. I'm getting completely drenched. The water keeps coming out. Looking at this, it looks like um, oh, I've got to those are I got to watch my wires for my trailer brakes up there. Dang it! Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy! What are we gonna do here? I don't know what I'm gonna do. This keeps leaking, so I'm I'm thinking this has something to do with our fresh water, like. We're literally, I think this is all full of water. Where I'm sitting, I think it's just full completely. I have a feeling things are not gonna end well for me. There's a screw way back there uh, that I have to pull. Quite frankly, it's holding a lot of weight. But if I do this and it pulls the fresh water valve off, I could be in a lot of trouble. This is bad. Totally bad. Really pressure. Oh, that's wet. Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go for that screw back there. All right. 
Now what? There's a lot of levels of suckage, and this just happens to be the biggest one. Can I phone a friend? <laughs> I need to phone a friend. Look at that, I'm making a snowball! It's like Christmas! Oh my god. Yeah, that's pretty heavy. It's a little, look, it's a little rain cloud. Okay. Concern is how I'm gonna get all back together. Try to keep all these in the same direction so I don't. Here, extra wires down here. <laughs> Thanks Grand Design, in case I need those. I guess I need to go get my headlight. Uh, you know what? I can see at least freedom up there where it doesn't look affected. Yeah. That's up by your second, your first fresh tank. Right? So let me try to pull some of this out and give it to you. So, uh, Todd. Yeah? I didn't I didn't see this on the, uh, the, the schedule of events. Well, this is extracurricular activities. That's okay. where this falls. <laughs> I, I am hoping by the end of this that there is an education value that somebody will get in the midst of our chaos. That's that's my hope. I don't know if it's a good hope, but by the time we're done, Harold. Well, the good news is you've already found the silver lining. <laughs> oh, did you really do that? <laughs> did you really just do that? I'm sorry. Oh my goodness. Yes, Harold. All right, it's time for an update. I'm pretty wet. Um, I think I have figured out where now I've gotten everything set and I'm starting to fill the front freshwater tank, which is supposed to bleed over when it gets full. It bleeds over to a reserve tank on the 395 MS. I don't know if it's gonna be like what your rig is, but I'm thinking in the location on where this comes out at the top, which when it gets full, I'll, I'll show you. It'll go into the reserve tank. I'm thinking what'll happen is uh, that fitting up top is where it's leaking. This is just a, a thought process because of the location. And we tried to run all the water and I didn't find any leaks just from running common water everywhere. So it has to be the situation of one tank bleeding into the other. So that's the hope. The bad part is that tank's going to be over 100 gallons. This tank's like 50. So for me to test the theory, I have to fill them completely both up. Which then means I have to drain them completely because I have to, <laughs> I have to remove the valves again. I have to remove the valves so I can stick the whole undercarriage back. And I have to get all new insulation. But I'm crossing my fingers. That's what the problem is. It, there is no other water lines. There's a, there's these water lines that are running here, but none of them are leaking. And we're in the, between this, these two axles, and all that water pooled right where I'm sitting. This is just, it's just logical that it would be somehow this overflow hose. So we will see. But it was a ton of water. I can't imagine this thing would have to leak horrendously bad as we were driving. To be this horrible. I guess the good news is I could probably upgrade my insulation while it's down, huh? That could be good. <laughs> all right, we got all cleaned up. <laughs> she was talking. Sorry, see? I thought you were talking to me. Oh no, you're talking to the switch crew. <laughs> I got everything cleaned up. We have not found any source of a leak, which is odd. So we're gonna let it sit for like two or three days. And as we go through our event, and hopefully by common use on everything, that we can discover where this is. We're just gonna let it all air out and we'll play it by ear afterwards. Sometimes you just gotta be patient, I guess. All right, it's time to put it all back together. I've let it rest for like, uh, dry out for the last two or three days. 
and I've been filling the pumps or I've been filling the tanks up and then from the tanks we use the tanks for a few days and then I let them fill completely up and pushed on to see if I could get any water to go over the top in case there was a crack on top but nothing but here's an interesting fun fact that I thought I'd share with you and that is that in a Grand Design Momentum 395 you have a freshwater tank that's auxiliary or I don't know if they call it a reserve tank and then another one so an interesting fun fact is that when it is filling up it fills up the reserve tank first through this outlet so it comes in the reserve tank up here and then as it fills it goes to that hose that's at the top of the tank that actually goes around and starts filling up your main tank so as it comes in the top it fills up the main tank that's there I'm putting new insulation in so when you first start seeing your reading that's on your 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 board your control panel and it says that first mark by the time it gets to the first mark because the sensors are on your main tank your reserve tank is completely full here's the fun fact though is that I've always wondered all right when we're getting low on water how does that work and I always thought the reserve tank would kick in but no because what happens is is it draws water from both tanks at the exact same time the reserve tank and your main tank right here so at the bottom at the bottom of each tank is the pump pumping out from here and there's one over there I just put new insulation in so that simply means sorry I'm using my phone because I left the camera over there on the other side that means that when you actually are done with water like it's you're you're sucking in air pretty much means both tanks are pretty much out you don't have like any reserve I always wondered how that worked. Now I know after being under here. So hopefully that might help you. So right now, I couldn't get it to duplicate. I'm hoping that it was because the underbelly uh, had a gap in it. I don't know how that gap happened. And then we drove through rainstorms for four hours and it brought the water in from the side and then pooled in that middle area. That is what I'm crossing my fingers on because I have looked everywhere and tried everything I could running normal water running the pump running and doing laundry there is nothing where this happened because right here look i mean there's nothing here it happened right between these two sections and it's just between the two water tanks and it actually pooled right here so that, that where it gapped was right there the water came in and pooled right here and weighted everything down so that's my theory and i'm sticking to it for now and Lord help me, this sucks to pull down. So if you have to ever do this, just know you're in for a treat because it's it's not fun. No bueno. All right, I'll get back to it. Got to put new insulation in and try to figure out how to screw everything back up. After taking some time, I didn't do it all at once. I did it in between. I got the underbelly all screwed back up. So that's nice. And now what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to run silicone on the outside where the track is and where the underbelly meet. Because with all the rain, it doesn't take much. That track is like that wide and the underbelly, that material goes underneath that. And sometimes it's half, sometimes it's whole and sticks out. And it's just held in by tension because of the screws. So my mind's thinking that water can run down that track when it rains really hard and then leak in if, it, if there's like a, a, a soft spot. And thinking back, hindsight 2020, right? When I first started looking at it, I probably, that should have probably been on my checklist of something to do ahead. And I think that pretty much hitting through all that rain and a gap developed of some sort, and I think the water poured in. That's my hope, but that's what I'm getting ready to do. I will say, I have a lot of respect for RV techs because crawling around under your rig for countless hours, it is, exhausting props to all you rv techs out there when you get to it i got some black uh, ge silicone it's it's uh got us more stretching and uh we're just gonna go ahead and load it up and see what happens see if we can get it to do oh and anything that i had to cut because some areas you have to cut to go around uh so you have 
like little lines from where you cut, like where the brake lines came in. You can't pull them through, so you cut a little line so you can, you know, move it out of that slit. I'm going to use some Gorilla Tape, and I did get another type of tape, but after talking to a tech, John, he said Gorilla Tape works just as good. So my little tip to make sure that it's clean, the surface is clean, I'm going to use isopropyl alcohol, clean off around where that is, and put this in. Uh, and it'll just be little strips, and then I'll probably silicone around that as well just to adhere, make sure everything adheres around the pipes and, and stuff that's there. That's what I'm doing. I've probably got another two or three hours left and hopefully I'll be all wrapped up. All right, so here's the thing is, is that you see how this material is actually outside the track. So it's overlapped a little bit. On the other side where it sits, this edge sits almost at the end of the track. So what can happen is this water, when it's raining really hard, can actually beat up on this especially around the tires and cannot find a way in to start pooling in the lower areas and so I'm just using silicone to go along the track line not along the track I'm sorry along the material where it meets the rail to prevent that from happening in the future and I think that was my main issue that happened down around the wheel when all the water we went through in the hard driving rains it sank a little bit causing that circulation of water from the tire to kind of settle into the lower section so this could almost be a preventative thing if you're getting ready to go full time. It's not hard at all to do and just something that you might want to consider, I guess. And we'll see how it goes. But I am simply caulking the material to the under, not the underside of the um, frame itself. But I got a lot of caulking to do. So I guess I'll have to get to it. <laughs>